and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Golgari Troll. I felt like playing this deck again. You know, we need some Clack Bridge Troll. This is just a really cool card, and we haven't played this deck in a while, so I felt like playing it. In fact, we got a couple of decks that uh, we haven't played in a little bit that I wanted to redo. That's what we got uh, for our last three decks here today, as you can see over on the left-hand column. But yeah, so this is Golgari Troll. This is a Golgari deck built around uh, Clack Bridge Troll, our 5-mana 8-8 Trample Haste. Um, it's basically just kind of a, a pile of just really good Golgari cards. That's basically what we got going on here. And it turns out good Golgari cards do a good job of winning games. Um, we got Golgari Queens that can take out Okos, Questing Beasts that can attack and, you know, do that kind of stuff, do all their attacking stuff, Murderous Rider takes out Okos, so does Assassin's Trophy. Because obviously we don't, really, we don't really want our opponent to have Oko in play whenever we clack bridge troll, because then uh, Oko will turn the troll into a 3-3, and that's not so great. Um, yeah, we don't have Gilded Geese because we don't really have ways to get more food into play besides the Geese. So, you know, we're going Paradise Druid, Incubation Druid as our two drops for accelerating into, like, turn four into these... And, you know, we have the Once Upon a Times that help us find our accelerators and hit land drops and everything. Our top end has just the really powerful six mana Planeswalkers. Liliana's a little awkward with the minus four if you give your opponent a bunch of goats. You don't really want to minus four afterwards. So that, that part's a little awkward, but Liliana's still really powerful just ticking up and still just a really good card. So, we you know, we have Liliana's in there. And, and of course, if we don't have Clackbridge Troll, maybe, you know, then Liliana's minus four is turned on kind of thing. So yeah, just a bunch of strong Golgari cards, um, and let's see if we can kill some opponents with the Clackbridge Troll. So we got a just a strong mid-range deck here. And we're just going to be playing leagues today, that's kind of what I feel like doing. And we're going to play till we win 5 or lose 2. And then we're going to have Demir Affinity Forge. Maybe my favorite deck to play. We're going to be playing that one up next. And then Teamer Invention. Because Demir Affinity Forge has two Field of the Dead in it. So we're going to have to remove those Field of the Dead from the deck after today. All right. This hand looks pretty quality. Yeah. Yep. Liliana gets to ult pretty fast. And so just going just going for that is good. <laughs> Field of the not so alive. Man, I really like troll, so I want to keep it, but we already have three, three, four, five. We should you know like look for another look for another land, look for other interaction. Field of the Band. Field. Field of the Dead inside. Orzov Locket. Looks like a cool card to put in your pocket. I couldn't think of anything else around the blocket. We need a Sultai Garrick Spark Double deck. I like where your head's at there. Liliana Spark Double. Maybe it should be just Grixis. Instead of Garrick, with Fires of Invention, where you go Nicobola, Spark Double. Oh, I should have played the Clackbridge Troll. Sorry, I was just thinking about what to do with Spark Double, and I didn't realize we just drew this untapped land that I could have played the Troll. 
I guess the troll's kinda bad against Vindictive Vampire. Kinda. I'll just I'll just swift end this vampire. So we're good. <laughs> when I lose a spark double, I'm not even mad. Spark double's a cool card. You got rid of my beast, but you'll never get rid of my troll. I'm thinking troll, quasi duplicate, rampaging, ferocidon for historic. That is pretty cool. All right, I guess that didn't work super well. That doesn't mean I'm not doing it again. We just gained that life right back. So get to gain a bunch of life, draw a bunch of cards. Ugh. Could finality. I lose four. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, it's just three, because right, it's another creature vampire doesn't trigger off itself. They don't have very many creatures left. I should probably give them some more creatures. Here you go. Yes, yes, yes. I know I, I, know I could have Golgari Queen, kill their guild mage, and attack for 10. That's not as fun. We're here to play some Clackbridge Trolls. That's what I'm here to do. Draw some cards, gain some life. No goats were harmed during the making of this game. I only pick targets that interest me. There's a good amount of creature Lucky. black creatures with trample. You know, like there's like Doom Whisper and stuff. I guess trample is a black keyword also. I grow not just not just the green. Yeah, that is that is really cool art for the goat. Like the shoe that it's carrying around. That is pretty cool. I think costs five mana. Hmm. 
We're going to take out a trophy for a ritual of set. To get a bunch of... Um, you know, like those creatures that do a lot of pinging in play. So far, so far, Golgari Rares is beating Orzhov Precons. So far. That's just one game. Orzhov Precons can come back. Shock the world. This is a pretty decent card. <laughs> yeah, of course you're allowed to talk about Pioneer. Of course. No blocks. All right, Demiri Trotta is up on YouTube. It's time to step out of the shadows. Don't dwell on what's about to happen. Oh yeah, I, sh I should add. All right, I added a Pioneer channel now also to the Discord. Yeah, we should have had one because, yeah, you know, like the Discord channel has, you know, all the other formats, you know, Brawl, Historic, Modern, Legacy, Popper, you know, everything else. You know, definitely have a, a Pioneer one, so it's it's on there. Discord's for everybody, for those of y'all that are kind of newer here. Uh, if you want to, you know, you don't have to be a subscriber or anything like that. If you want to join the Discord to talk magic, there's a link that I am trying to put into... the chat there it goes there it is if you're watching it on YouTube in the video description there's a link to the discord channel there as well and that's the best place to send me direct messages if you if you ever want and or need to do that about deckless or anything We've also been having trouble with the Discord over the last week or two with subscribers being synced and it's showing that they're subbed in the Discord. Um, and I, I believe I fixed that problem today. So I think that should be fixed. So if you are a subscriber and your Discord doesn't show that you're a subscriber, hopefully it does now or you know you can try syncing it or, or you know whatever. But hopefully that problem should be fixed.
Clack bridge troll. I mean, this is this is really just ancestral recall if you think about it. Its pain is our game. That's that's all this card is. It's just five mana ancestral recall. Plus, uh, plus Phyrexian dreadnought. <laughs> I am ancient and wise. The fabric of the Yeah, that's fair. Ancestral recall at anyway. at five mana sorcery speed is a little worse, but. You you get an eight eight attached to it, you get a you get a win con attached to it to make it fair, and it's legal and standard. So I could Murderous Rider kill this 1-1 one, one to make sure Vraska ultimates. I could kill with Ugin also, but I'm not doing that. Truth lies beyond Revan with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so for that support there, Revan. I appreciate that. Sub number 17 on day. on what's about to happen. Yeah, I want a Garrick. I guess even if Vraska takes one, we still get to ultimate Vraska. We don't need to kill the 1-1. One -one. life gain. They're at 51 and they're dead. Questing Beast has death touch. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. It's death touch. Doesn't matter how much life you have. You're dead. If you're watching this later on YouTube and you don't know what happened, basically Vraska ultimate means that if any creature deals the damage to the opponent, they lose the game automatically. And so we had a creature that dealt damage to the opponent, so they lost the game automatically. <laughs> we can go with this. I guess I'm going to once upon a time on turn two, see if we get a two mana accelerant. Uh, 
Um, if my opponent would have a Lich's Mastery, would they lose? I don't think so, because I think Lich's Mastery says that you can't lose the game. So I don't believe so. No, it just says you don't lose the game for having zero or less life. So then, yes, you would lose then, because you can still lose the game. I should not have played that forest. That was my B. I definitely should have played Once Upon a Time first. Sorry, I was kind of doing that. Because uh, I, I didn't. I, I saw that I drew a land, but I didn't really realize that it was a temple. Um, I do like Nyssa and Garrick. I'm going to take this Fabled Passage so we can shuffle those back. But yeah, I should have played the. I should have done that first, seeing that we weren't hitting Accelerant, played the temple. Now we'll get the we'll have to play the temple here. Those blind to tyranny. I would have played temple last turn. I could have murderous ridered right here. Isn't there a better better finisher than troll in the deck? Yeah, there there are better finishers than troll in the deck. Like the six mana walkers. Troll draws you a lot of cards. That's why it's good. You get to draw a lot of cards. So this does kill Golgari Queen, but I'm using it instead of Murderous Rider because Murderous Rider can kill Nyssa. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms rule. Let's broaden. But yeah, obviously this would have been better if we would have Murderous Ridered on their turn, then untapped and like questing beast. I guess they would have okoed my beast. That would have been sad. I grace you with my lack of presence. They're probably out of those, right? I don't have any more of those. Sahili. Sahili's cool. Mind and body should move in unison. Like meditate and prepare. Overwhelming. That card's not too powerful or anything. No. That's completely fair. Yep, yeah, this looks like my team of walkers deck. Which is pretty sweet. No sword can pierce my scales. Look to the skies. So down to 10. 
Yeah, troll questing beast is pretty sweet. You know, you, sure you give them more, you give them more creatures, but they can't block anyway. Yeah, I've the last the last couple times on Imusha, I've played this deck. I've played it over in Mythic. I just don't really feel like playing ranked right now. But yeah, if you if you check out the other videos of us playing this deck, it's done well. It's just a, you know, kind of like a pile of just real strong cards, basically. Which is a, a good spot to be at in Standard. This troll is just going to gain us three life and draw us a card every turn, which is pretty nice. Like, why do you need the Great Henge when you have Clackbridge Troll? So I guess they got like Flame Sweep. Maybe. It's gotta be Flame Sweep. So Flame Sweep will kill one Murderous Rider. I still, you know, I gain a life from the exchange by double blocking that 2-1. I don't think... Oh, it's Chandra. Okay, that works. Right. Way. That makes sense. Up here. Well, good thing I didn't block a 1-1 one -one with Questing Beast, because they, they, wanted, they wanted me to do that, and then... <clears throat> it dies to Chandra. Yeah, I, play, I played around Chandra. Even though I didn't really know I was doing that. But I guess I did it. Played perfectly around Chandra. Your, my favorite home-cooked meal? My favorite home cooked meal. Like, my favorite one, I guess, yeah, like, it's, it's like, I like uh, pork chops, black beans, and then a vegetable that can, that can vary. Um, but yeah, like, it's my favorite thing to cook. I do like meatloaf. I'm not I'm not big on country fried steak. I don't really like things that are fried. Yeah. Yeah, likely Noctis Grass will be just fine in the main deck. Likely. Yeah, I love I love black beans. Definitely one of my favorite things to eat. Let's see. Don't have lands. 
But we're on the draw. <laughs> yeah, Witch's Oven and Cauldron Familiar do take a lot of clicks. Well, at least we can stop a turn two Oko with a Duress. Okay, chicken with mushroom. You have like a mushroom cream sauce with chicken breasts. That that does sound pretty delicious. I like mushrooms. I like chicken. Yeah, that sounds pretty delicious. All right, so I have two options here. They scry to the top. I can either trophy the temple and make them shuffle, or I could just trophy the thing that they scryed to the top. I'm going to do the latter. Many have challenged me over the ages. None have prevailed. Bow to the howling wind. My search continues elsewhere. Your mom makes an Alfredo shredded chicken lasagna. That's amazing. Oh man, that does sound amazing. I like good homemade chili. Probably shouldn't be shuffling here because we need land and all I'm doing is taking a land out of the deck. That's probably a bad idea. Probably a bad idea. <laughs> What's my favorite flavor of peach pie? Peach, I guess. Alright, well that... that Kasmina shuts off Murderous Rider because I don't have mana. They discarded Sarkin we over discarding Disdainful Stroke. Drawn a bunch of nothing. Yay. why my opponent should not have played one of those last lands because of Kasmina and because of um plus they could draw royal scions like with this deck with the looting you can do in this deck you just want to keep the lands in in hand because of the looting there don't be difficult but they they really so like they should not have discarded the Sarkin I think they they thought that, you know, like I could just, they play the Sarkin, I could just kill the Sarkin. But they forgot that the Kasmina, with me being stuck on two lands, the Kasmina was just protecting the Sarkin. So if, you, if you're, for the opponent, if you're watching this video later on. A couple of things to change there. Pizza Cube. I do like pizza a lot, but my favorite pizza shape is just circular, I suppose.
that's probably my number one. If I could choose like one food to act to like that you could turn in. All right, here's a good one. Y'all, y'all tell me your answer. If you could take one food and turn it into being really healthy for you, which food are you changing? Me, I think I'm changing pizza. I think if pizza was really healthy, that would make my life better. You do cheesecake? That'd be good. Cheeseburger? Oh, that that's a good one, too. A cheeseburger. That's a good one. Guess we do this. Chinese food? Okay. Yep, that's a good one. Nachos. That was that would have been my answer whenever I was younger. I used to absolutely love nachos whenever I was a kid. That was my favorite food for sure. Pulled pork burritos. <laughs> Anything microwavable from Walmart. My opponent decided not to play a third land or a fourth land. It's a pretty bold strategy. We'll see if it works out for them. Usually if your goal is to play Covetous Urge, you need four lands, not two. Nachos, pizza, and barbecue for you. Choose between one of those. It's unfortunate that my two removal spells are trophies, because I really don't want to give my opponent another land, TBH. Beavis and Sandy can hit me, but if they don't really have the mana to, to cast stuff, it's not that big of a deal. Ribs. Double... Double fudge or fudge double chocolate ice cream. Yeah, I was wondering. I was wondering if people were gonna say ice cream. Ice cream was like healthy. You just sit around all day eating ice cream and like, you know, it's basically like a, a healthy smoothie kind of thing. Yeah, I, I agree. No ceilings. I, I I'm right there with you. I wish that we could remove unnecessary sugar from things. Same salt and sugar. Things have way too much salt and sugar. That's something I I will never, I never do. I never will put like salt on anything. You know, like you like take like a salt shaker, put it on stuff. I, no. Don't need more salt. Cheeseburger was a pretty good one though. I could play Nissa. Oh, the card's like hidden. It's like way over there. It's certainly possible Nissa is a better play than Clackbridge Troll, but I, I didn't. I didn't show up here to play Nissa's. We're not playing Golgari Nissa. French fries, that's a pretty good one. Mm. 
<laughs> not attacking with the goats. Nosferatu, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I understand that French fries. I'm, I'm somebody who likes. A, I like a lot of ketchup with my French fries. French fly, French fries are like a vessel to carry ketchup. For us. Yeah, cane sauce. The raisin canes. That's a, it's definitely a good one. You do mayo with french fries? I like mayo and ketchup together on a burger. That's about the only place I like mayo. It's on some, on some sandwiches. <laughs> That's your fancy sauce? Mayo and ketchup? Uh, Europeans put mayo everywhere? Okay. Rip said, why'd you get so behind on the fries that you had to catch up? Uh, I like it. So y'all like mayo and french fries? I don't know if I've ever tried mayo and french fries, honestly. The yum yum sauce from a Japanese steakhouse. That's always good. Okay, in Germany, it's it's normal to do both mayo and ketchup for French fries, huh? So yeah, I could have used Garrick to kill a goat and trophy the other goat. I'm not about that life though. Not about using removal spells on goats. Goats are too cool. <laughs> I'm not European and I still love mayo and fries. Huh, I guess I'll have to try that. Oh really? You make yum 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 sauce with mayo, ketchup, and honey? That's probably why I like the yum yum sauce so much. I like mayo, ketchup, and honey. Honey's really good. Honey's a that's a good quality. I don't know. Do you call it a sauce? Is honey a sauce? Condiment. You like mayo, ketchup, and pickle juice? Whoa. Whoa. All right, let's get these Veil of Summers in here against the blue-black deck. Could play the Ceratops. Honey is fancy sugar. It's a sweetener. What's up, Alder 2? Day's going good, man. I'm getting hungry. We've just been, we got food talk going on here in the chat, and it's pretty awesome learning from people across the world. 
Okay, so if you cook honey, then it's a sauce. If you cook the honey. <laughs> Thanks, Elder 2. Yeah, I definitely like honey and tea for sure. Honey is pretty healthy for you, right? I've always heard that, like, the best honey to get is, like, locally grown honey. For, like, you want, you want, um, you want to get honey that's near your location for, I don't know, like, pollen reasons or something. Is olive oil mayo better than animal fat mayo? Uh, from the words, that, I do not know the answer, but from the words that you used, I would assume yes. Healthy-wise, at least. I don't know about taste-wise. I have not had an Irish breakfast tea. I do not know what that is. Um, I usually like, I usually drink green tea. What's Irish breakfast tea? Is that good? Uh, no, I don't think so, Jokers. I don't think we're going to have four-person games on Arena anytime soon. <laughs> Everybody's saying that Irish breakfast tea is just a, a Guinness. Oh, the pets are doing great, Rochion. Yeah, Hawkeye's back here. Hawkeye's lounging out back here on the couch. Puppy and Harvey are doing great as well. Yeah, so it helps your allergies build a tolerance if you get local honey. Yeah. That sounds right. This is kind of a land drop. I mean, I guess it's a land drop. I mean, I need land. That slows me down just a little bit, but it's not like I need to be... It's not like I need a land immediately next turn. We're playing against the control deck. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's Yeah, the Vietnamese noodle soup Yeah, that's Very good There's a couple different Really good pho restaurants Rude. I mean, they're discarding. I'm discarding one of these things that we have two of, either Ryder or Nissa. I guess it's Ryder. I was I was just putting it over here. Huh. Oh, you don't like the Mirage Forest? Honey is the only food that doesn't spoil. Honey is immortal. Huh. Good to know. Did the person that say what the Irish breakfast tea actually is ever actually say what it is? The person that asked about it? That was toasted waffles. Okay, so it's an actual blend of tea. Okay. Thorongil! What's up, Thorongil? Thanks for the Twitch Prime sub.
I appreciate that. I will rise again. So that's number 19 on the day. What'd they take? Anissa? Oh, my Liliana's already gone. I was like, why don't they take Liliana? Or... Wait, I guess they did take Liliana. Oh, wait, they get to cast the card? That's pretty sweet. Cannot protect itself. The land shall conquer you. So Twinkies do go bad. They found honey that was still edible from Egyptian burials. Whoa. No, so many good cards in my graveyard. I'm gonna just keep drawing more removal. Rise, my elemental friend. You gonna try Arya as a commander? That's that sounds awesome. Yeah, Arya's probably yeah, that's that's a good brawl commander. Do they have it is it easy to build brawl decks on arena right now? Okay, because honey is already digested by bees, so that, that's why they that's why it has no expiration date. Learning new stuff. Behold, nature's true power. Okay, so there's no commander slot yet for deck building. Gogari Troll being too strong. And we're 3 0. Oh, that's not the reason why it has no expiration date? All right. Well, I don't know. I'm just reading what y'all are, are writing down. Everything you find inside of a everything you find inside of a pyramid chamber is edible. If you technically, all right. No, I, I've never heard of that. Lapsing So Chong Tea. It's heavily smoked and piney. Can I just like get that at the gro grocery store? I'm not a wasabi fan.
I like ginger a ton. Ginger is really good. I'll have ginger with my sushi. I'm not really too big on super spicy stuff. I'm going to write this down. Um, yes, I think a, a form of blue-white control is viable at the moment. Um, and yes, I would probably play Planar Cleansing in it. Are they Mono-G? Or are they GB like me? Or GR? They're GR. Hmm. I guess I should have just blocked. Yeah, I should have. Probably should have blocked. They're going to sacrifice. They did not sacrifice. Could have saved four life, I would have just blocked. I was thinking, I was like, no, I want to, I was going to kill the questing beast, and, you know, I'd still have, like, the, the biggest creature with my questing beast, but I forgot, you know, right afterwards I realized, wait, the Pell Collector is going to grow, and so I wouldn't have the best, the biggest creature. All right, so they have Colossus. We'll see if I can block and then swift end, like after Colossus. Ugh. Can't block that thing and then swift end it. Hexproof. Hexproof. I guess I just can't, you know, if they didn't have Spellbreaker, my life would be easier. 
but they do have Spellbreaker. I can't swift end that thing. Instant speed after the Colossus. I don't know. We've been talking about food for a while. I think somebody in chat asked me my favorite food of some kind of favorite food. And that continued on to more food talk. I'm going to have these two trade, even though it grows the Pelt Collector, but I can, you know, use removal on Pelt Collector. I can't really re use removal on the uh, Spell Breaker. Hmm. I wish I had an Overgrown Tomb so I could go Garrick and Murderous Rider, both. I'm kind of stuck at just doing one. I guess we could draw a land. Oh gosh, Shockland. Looks like you weren't fit to survive. Ugh. Shockland's rough. So I did shock here because if they have Hellkite or really a questing beast, kind of either one, but especially Hellkite, I want to be able to play it. The Murderous Rider, that is. Okay. We're going to be able to ultimate the nest of this next turn to make these lands indestructible. And obviously we draw a forest first. One of the only eight cards that I don't want to draw a forest, <laughs> since we're about to get go get them all for free. Mm. How do I'm doing? Great. Yeah, doing great. Got a good day of magic. Today is opening day for the Mavs. The Dallas Mavericks, that is. 
NBA season's here. I'm excited about the little Mavs this year with KP and Luka. So first day of the season today. Hey, Boots. Okay. Want to give it a little share and see what you thought of it. All right, awesome. So yeah, we'll do the deck tech. Let me pull that up. We'll do that after this league. Thanks there, Boots. Okay. So what are they doing? Oh yeah, they're doing gruel things. Let's get these noxious grasps in here. And Ceratops does a good job blocking. You know, it trades with stuff. So we'll get that in here. We'll get trophy in here. And I don't think I need a ritual of soot. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't know. I, I don't have things I don't want. I guess maybe Golgari Queen. Four mana to kill like a three drop that already had haste. Finality is pretty slow. I guess Ugin. And the Liana are kind of slow also. All right, gonna cut the incubation druids because of their stomp things. And we already, we just put in a bunch of more two mana cards, so. Hey, we got a new sub, Dyslexic from Blade. Thank you, Santa Blade, for the gifted sub, getting us to our next sub goal. That's right, y'all. We hit another sub goal today. Let's mark it down towards the next 12 hour stream. Let's see what we got. That's number 15. Four, yep, that's number 15. So we're five sub goals away from another 12 hour stream. Mulligan. If this was a seven card hand, I'd definitely be mulliganing it. But with we're already at six. Um, so you know, like we're already at six cards. I'm just hoping for us to be on the you know on the draw here and draw a bunch of spells, basically. There's no reason to play once upon a time on end step like that. Just no reason. Just draw your card first. See what you draw. And then cast once upon a time. So you have more information. Simic food is very good. It's the it's like the number one deck right now. Uh, or you know, different versions, you know, Simic, Bant, that kind of stuff. Yep, it's the the deck to beat right now. So really, really good for me. They had nothing to do with four mana. It's pretty surprising, to be honest, with the Gruul deck. It's, it's definitely very good for me. That you know gave us more time, but really surprising they had nothing to do there for four mana.
<laughs> yeah, it's honestly nothing that that I'm too bothered by, Matthew. Yeah, they're just going to try to race the troll, looks like. So yeah, troll with troll. It does make this Liliana a lot worse. I was hoping my opponent was too scared to go to two. Didn't have any good answers there. All right. Um, maybe we should play Ritual of Set. Especially if I cut these Incubation Druids. Yeah, we should play Ritual of Set. Destroy all those goats. I'm going to take out Anissa. Yeah, maybe I should be playing Finality. Vraska just doesn't kill the threats that I'm most concerned about. I'm basically replacing Vraska with Noxious Grasp. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm making the deck worse when mulliganing. I'm putting the Assassin's Trophy back here. It's not a card that I want right away. I don't want to don't want to speed him up. Garrick looks pretty easy to put back, but I think Garrick's gonna be pretty important to winning. We have four mana sources here, like the Once Upon a Time's a land. Paradise Druid is, of course, another mana source. Like, we have some acceleration, and we just need a, we need powerful cards. Garrick is, is awesome. Yeah, it's a really good quality card for sure. Garrick Pioneer with 
get a Apex Predator, Caller of Beasts, Cursed Huntsman. For oh, I should not attack. That's a bad attack. That's a bad attack. Uh, I was trying to take it back, but I I did it too fast. Okay, good. Not punished. The reason why I'm saying that I should not attack is because they had the ability to kill my Paradise Druid with a removal spell. I wish I could trophy the Spellbreaker on their turn. Oh, yeah, of course, Blade. I, no, I, I didn't see your message, but yeah, I can definitely change that. No problem. I just can't block with Paradise Drew. It'd be nice to be able to double block, but I just can't. Obviously, keeping the Garrick over the Assassin's Trophies backfired completely. Why do they always have to have the best card they could possibly have? <laughs> I kept I kept four four mana sources. I kept three land and um and Paradise Druid. And you know, we never drew a land. Just never drew one. Yeah, we're still taking two with the life. We're still taking lethal with the life link. Yeah. And even the the once upon a time put three spells and one land down to the bottom. So like we only we only put it's like the bottom four cards were three lands and a spell, and yet we still never drew a land. <laughs> yeah, we died. All right, so it looks like the same matchup. Hopefully we draw lands this time. Same thing we kept... You know, two lands, once upon a time, mana creature. Again. The ends justify the means. What 
Will we draw lands this time? Literally the same thing. I'm outmaneuvered. Poke Collector is a good one drop. Oh, great. Now I can't even I can't even use Assassin's Trophy because they're stuck on lands. They have all spells. I don't have a choice. Thank you. About time. Of course, leading with Clackbridge Troll because we get to gain three life a turn. Been a great time for finality. Still a great time for finality. Even better, we got to gain three life and draw a card first. Suddenly we have a 10 10 trampler, and they got nothing. Never mind, they got something. Would you like to sacrifice a creature? Hmm, they did not. I am what they call me. A monster. Try not to lose your head out. You can't save Incubation Druid. You only put two counters on something, and Incubation Druid's an O2. So if we put two counters on it, it'd be a 2-4. And then it would get minus four, minus four. It's like, I could not save Incubation Druid. <laughs> this, this, this is a pretty sweet match. Just the huge creatures. 8-8 eight, eight Trampler against 10-10 ten, ten Trampler. The Battle of the Titans. There you go. Yeah, Garrick's, Garrick's awesome. Definitely one of my favorite Planeswalkers as well. Hmm. 
kind of want to play Clackbridge Troll. Even though I know the better play is Nyssa. Through this land, we are all connected. Stay on the trail. Behold, nature's true power. All right, I'll play the better card. Oh yeah, I guess I should just Legion's End and Vraska with six mana. <laughs> Killer things. Yeah, you right, Leak. You right. So a bunch of creatures that are green. Gonna play a bunch of removal. Maybe I should be playing all these Assassin's Trophies. You know, like, with us playing not... Uh, we could cut some Legion's Ends, uh, I guess. Yeah, Assassin's Trophy just gets them that extra land. Alright, we're going to play two trophies. Yep, we're playing the deck to play. We're we're trying to play Clackbridge Trolls. We're not trying to have lethal. Exactly. Exactly. So we're gonna need to draw lands, but we got a lot of Noxious Grasp. And I assume that card's good in this matchup. So the reason why I'm doing these Noxious Grass with Sorcery Speed is because of Veil of Summer. I'm casting them while they're tapped out. They don't Veil of Summer me. I'm saving trophy for the Great Henge. It's basically, do I want to trade Questing Beast or Noxious Grasp for Beanstalk Giant? And I'll trade Questing Beast. I think they should attack with the 2-1 anyway. 
If I block the two on him, taking 16. All right, so put this back first, and now get rid of this Great Henge. So now if they want to gra go grab a land, they have to shuffle that Ronus back. Is there, is there going to be an, an Ask Guardians of the Galaxy movie? Nice. We're still chilling here with three lands. No big deal. Haven't, haven't missed any land drops or anything like that. Nope, not at all. Nothing like that. That's going to be a really big pulp collector. That's a really good card for them to have. To team up with a beanstalk giant. Or that just ends the game. Yeah, we're going down to one here. It's not technically lethal, but I got four mana. I don't have, like, finality as a card to have or anything like that. All right, I guess maybe it's better to have... Trophy than Ceratops, just a lot cheaper, more reliable, and it kills Great Henge. I guess killing Great Henge is a really important thing to do. Um, which deck will be the best deck today? Probably this, if I, if, out of the four decks today, which one is the best is probably this deck. Yeah. Looks like we're struggling against some green decks, though. The thing I hate about Assassin's Trophy is it's such a bad card to have in your opener. You just can't cast it right away. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters your control, put a counter on Crunch Wrangler. Still worse than Pelt Collector. Pelt Collector get, gets counters whenever the creatures enter or die. And plus, if that thing gets a counter. Murderous Rider still trades with it. <laughs> awesome, Dome. Good job. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely like some clack bridge troll for sure.
Like my like here, like my opponent probably shouldn't just be sacrificing the goats immediately, but I'm happy that they are. <clears throat> I'm happy just to gain three life, draw a card a couple of times. Helps dig through the deck. So unfortunately that makes Yorvo a 5-5. Five five. So Yorvo doesn't die to this finality I'm about to cast. Do I want to gain three life draw a card with Clackbridge Troll first? I could go to combat. Or would I rather have the 10 10 back to block Yorvo? I, it's, it's just going to be an 8 8, but still. I think I want the card. Yeah, I'm going to be saving. Yeah, I'm going to be saving Murderous Rider. Could blow up my face if they play two creatures here. Because then I have to chump block with Murderous Rider. Instead of having the troll back to block. Blind Judge! Okay, nice, nice to be here with such a great people and streamer. Thank you so much there, Blind Judge. I appreciate that. Oh, I guess they could just play an aggressive mammoth also. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's not what's supposed to happen there. Yeah, my opponent really doesn't know how this card works. Clackbridge Troll's broken if your opponent has to sacrifice a creature every turn. <laughs> I guess they don't, maybe they don't realize it's an option. That is, that's a really good Clackbridge troll. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Splitter. You said earlier that troll makes people misplay. I mean, that we just traded our Murderous Rider that we had to chump block with for the Yorvo. That's that's what happened. Murderous Rider actually has. Delayed death touch. Slow, slow death touch. It's kind of like, or like last death touch. It's the, it's the opposite of first strike. I don't know why I let like the pelt collector resolve and everything before trophying this aggressive mammoth. I was kind of just talking. Now the Pelt Collector gets an additional counter that it really didn't need to have. Down. 
That card is really good. Together, we will prevail. The land shall conquer you. So I'm going to be adapting the incubation druid here. Hydra for three. All right, you got it. The land fights for us. And they just have to sacrifice a creature every turn. It's so good. So at the beginning of combat of your turn, your opponent must sacrifice a creature. It's like it's like Rankle. Basically we're just attacking with Rankle. But only our opponent sacrifices, and only we draw. But we're choosing sacrifice draw, but it's just they sacrifice and we draw. But instead of dealing three damage with Rankle, we're gaining three life. Also. This is a pretty big test here. This is a pretty big test here. I, I can't imagine they sacrifice a 9-9 when I have an 8-8, right? They, there's no way they sacrifice here. Ah, oh, they didn't sacrifice. They figured it out. I guess I had lethal with the other Nissa. I was I was too I was too interested to see what happened here. Could put him down to one. But then my troll's gone. I don't want my troll to be gone. We need more troll. Indestructible lands. I will aid you. The land fights for us. For your life, don't flatter yourself. All right, we're four and one. We're going on to the final boss. With Golgari Troll. It's final boss time. <laughs> that was a fun match. That was a fun match. Cue final boss music. Hmm. 
difficult decision on you know like in the dark of what to put back. Yeah, could have shipped a Paradise Druid. But with us only having two lands and, you know, we have a good amount of fives and sixes. As we've seen before, I wanted the other mana creature. Be careful. Walk with me. Sing with me. Surely you must be vanished. I would have just played Paradise Druid. Like, if my opponent did nothing, I would have just played Paradise Druid. My other Paradise Druid here. Just all two for ones. That's a strange and magnificent the elements. <laughs> okay, well, we gotta go questing beast, I think. First. They snap blocked there. Oh, because they have another one? I was gonna say, like, if they just draw a removal spell, they could, they could have, you know, gotten rid of my questing beast and killed me. But I guess they just had another one in hand. So I guess I, I guess I shouldn't attack. I guess I'm not supposed to attack there. Yeah, it's tough to beat the third questing beast. <laughs> yeah, green has some pretty good cards. Um, it depends on, so you say, if, if you have a Hushbringer on the battlefield, how come Mayhem Devil's ability still trigger? Well, if it's a creature dying, it shouldn't trigger, but if it's an artifact getting sacrificed or something else getting sacrificed, it'll still trigger, I think. Not exactly sure there. Um, because what does Hushbringer say? Creatures entering the battlefield are dying. So yeah, it has to be a creature dying, or a creature. Yeah, so if it's not a creature dying, it will still trigger. Because yeah, the card says that creatures dying don't cause stuff to trigger. 
but Mayhem Devil triggers on any permanent, so permanents that are not creatures. Oh, so it's still okay. So it still triggers anyway because it's the creature dying is not is not what's causing the trigger. It's the sacrifice is what's causing the trigger. So those are different things. So Hushbringer does not stop Mayhem Devil at all. If I take the Paradise Druid to play next turn, then I have Garrick the following turn. I guess I should have done that. I played one Feasting Troll King deck. It was a donation deck. I haven't built my own, um, but it didn't go well. I played a lot of Feasting Troll Kings where my opponent turned it into a 3-3 with an Oko. I felt pretty bad. I don't really want to shuffle. I don't really want to draw these cards at the bottom of the library. Just hold on to that for now. Should I cast Finality? Or Garrick? The problem with casting Finality is Wicked Wolf does survive. Well, they they have two they have two food tokens to sacrifice. The wicked wolf's a five five. <clears throat> Let me get Garrick down for some blockers. Watch out. I don't think there's any way my opponent wouldn't realize that. I could have... The the thing about doing finality is it, it would have made the, the troll a 6-6, six, six, so it would have killed Nyssa. We're now trying to kill Nyssa whenever Nyssa has 7 loyalty, I guess, is a little more difficult. But 
But we do get to destroy another land. Yeah, yeah, finality gives the troll minus four, minus four. So maybe I should have just done a last turn to kill Nissa. So we can finality next turn, put the counters on Questing Beast. Questing Beast definitely gets through. Keeps Nissa from ultimating. I don't want to trade Questing Beast for two forests when I have finality. Why well, did not attack? But they could double block with the forests. Which is what they should do to protect Nissa. I'm pretty worried about counter magic. It's also kind of testing counter magic by playing Questing Beast and everything. That's a very good sign. Play another thing like that. Well, obviously that hurts. Uh, now we get to old Nissa. <laughs> Nissa ult's not the end of the game because finality still kills all the indestructible lands. It just gets a whole lot of cards out of their deck. Basically, the debate here is, is if I want to minus that thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I could have. So, you yeah, could have, could have finality and then ultimate Garrick, and that would have been awesome. But now they get to Nissa ult. When the land speaks, but I shall listen. my ult, my Garrick ult, at least will not kill Garrick now.
So everything but the Wicked Wolf on their side is still going to die. And then these five over here are going to die on my side. I would assume that finds them crisis. Hmm. Did he even attack like with these indestructible lands? They stayed at 10 life. They didn't gain any life. I don't I don't think that's a very good decision to stay at 10 life. I guess this only puts them down to 1. Now this is a hunting party. <clears throat> no, I can't put putting counters on the wolf. They would still die because they're getting minus four, minus four. So the wolves would die. The land shall conquer you. I'm done with you. <laughs> Life's about to end. Hope you're ready. All right, GG's. So they go to 13. They have to sacrifice their forest to stay alive. And then my 6-8 kills their Nyssa. And then they have nothing. Hmm. Ritual sits pretty good against Nissa lands. We should probably play that. What am I putting back? If I'm putting, do I get rid of an incubation druid or a paradise druid? I probably can't on the draw. I probably need those things on the draw. I'll cut it once upon a time. 
All right, game three. Yeah, absolutely, Candice. Always, always is. Always is. Yep. Yeah, I'm always, always happy to answer questions, Candice. All right, is our troll deck going to get the five wins? We're going to draw some lands. Yeah, we're, we're just playing the one fine finality. It's been very good for us, though. Unfortunately, that was a lot of lands down to the bottom that we just sent there. Put three other lands down at the bottom. Yeah, arena's lagging just a tad. This is the game three of the sixth match. Since we last reset, so yeah, it's starting to lag a little bit. Not too bad, though. Certainly feels like they're trying to keep open counter magic. I'm still going to play my thing. It's just whether or not... Hey, MSG. Yeah, it's basically whether or not I wanted to shock. I want the no shock. Other option was just adapt incubation druid that turn. But if you know if we did that, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. And even if we draw a land, that's only nine. We didn't get to double spell with the five drops. So made him use a food. Pretty good card to play on turn five. Unfortunately, I didn't draw a land. I would have liked to play a five drop here in addition to killing the Krasis. But we got just, we got, at least we drew a questing beast, I guess.
Pawn is being so rude. Countering my trolls. I think Pioneer is live on Magic Online now. Pioneer is not going to be on Arena. One wolf out of here, at least. They really should have made a food on their turn. Like, when they're, they weren't doing anything else with the mana. With the only exception being if they had counter magic. Which I guess it's certainly possible, you know, like they... Could have been holding up counter spell. Eating this wicked wolf's not gonna be easy. But at least we got one out of there. I think I sideboarded out my Legion's End. <clears throat> kind of what I need is like Legion's End, this, these geese. I do have Ritual of Sets though. So many counter spells. You try my patience. Keep countering all my cool five drops.
wish I had a way to get rid of this wicked wolf. I don't. I just don't though. Why in the world are they attacking like this? Why would they... Like, don't they just want to kill my questing beast with two three threes? Now they got a chump here with the 3-3 three, three, or Nissa dies. That's a great card. That deals with Wicked Wolf. That is great. A gray card. Please don't draw Krasis. Uh, come on. You don't. You don't need a Krasis. Stop. So rude. Oh, I don't even have a sixth land to play my Garrick yet. Okay. So I guess Garrick has to kill Krasis, even though that means Garrick dies then, so I don't get to make wolves, but we just have to kill the Krasis. You ever listen to the crickets? The good news is we get to draw a card for that. Well, Veil of Summer just, just does it. They got that. But Questing Beast would would kill the the Nissa's at four, so like with the Krasis gone, Questing Beast would kill the Nissa. But yeah, but Veil of Summer is broken. Hydroid Krasis and Veil of Summer, a couple broken cards there. All right, so we went four and two. Not bad, not bad. Could have maybe um, you know, obviously who knows, but maybe we could have pulled that out if they didn't draw that crisis. Oh well. So Golgari Troll four and two. Good record there. Um, yeah, good record there. I mean, I liked, I liked the extra Golgari queen that we had in here. Did a good job of killing Okos and stuff. Hey, what's up, Yud? Doing good. Um, yeah, so Clackbridge Troll was, was pretty good for us again. You know, a lot of time it's just five mana, gain three life draw card, and then next turn gain three life draw card, and then the next turn gain three life draw card. Kind of thing. 
I'd have to say the card that performed the that performed the best and really overperformed by quite a bit was honestly Find Finality. That card was awesome. I think the next time we play the deck is really basically because of the finality. Like finality was just awesome as a sweeper. Probably better than what Ritual of Soot would be. I think I'd probably want to play this. Play another one of these over in the bot in the sorry, over in the sideboard. Over the other Ritual of Soot. Or in addition to. I don't feel like I really ever want Shifting Ceratops against anything besides, like, Flash, but nobody plays Flash. I feel like there's something better for that Shifting Ceratops slot. Um... No, I like Liliana, even though Liliana, you know, is kind of awkward with the, the troll. I, I think I'd want to keep Liliana in the deck. I like that card quite a bit. I've thought about playing a Golgari Fine Broker in here. Like, instead of the third Golgari Queen playing the Fine Broker. Thought about doing that, where even Fine, Fine Broker could even, like, get back Fable Passage to hit an extra land drop if we need it kind of thing. This is a pretty cool little deck here. No, with field out of the format, Ashiok is not needed. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess... So, the next time that we play the deck, that's true. The next time we play the deck, we can take out these Ashioks from the sideboard. Because, yeah, we, do, we will not need these anymore. There's still a field in the format today. But, yeah, next time we play it, we'll be able to take out those Ashioks. So, yeah, we don't need those. And those will be able to turn into other things. I don't know exactly what yet, you know, we'll see like the next time we play the deck, I'll kind of see like what, you know, at that point, what are people playing? What do I want in my sideboard to attack that? And then, you know, I'll have, we'll have those open slots there with the Ashiox and probably the Shifting Ceratops as well. Um, <laughs> but there we go. That's it. So that's Golgari Troll. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate both of those. Also, I haven't uh, plugged this last couple of videos, but I hope you check out my Patreon. It's new. It's just about a week old. Um, Patreon.com slash ToddStevensMTG. And there's a link in the uh, video description if you're watching this on YouTube. But I, it's just $3 a month for uh, the Patreon. So if you're liking the videos and everything, I hope you sign up over there. That's just, you know, like a a tip for a pizza delivery person, basically a month, you know, just three bucks a month. And I'll have written content over there. Um, every, like basically two or three times a week, I'll be putting up blog posts over there and also sideboard guides, especially whenever we kind of find out what this new format without field of the dead, looks like. And I have a couple of decks that are looking good. I'll be making sideboard guides for them over there. And plus, if you're a Patreon member, if you ever have a deck that you want me to uh, make a sideboard guide for. Um, always feel free to ask over there. So uh, I put the link there in chat also. So ho hopefully y'all consider uh, supporting the stream if you like the videos and everything over on Patreon. But that's it here for Golgari Troll. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.